Hey y'all, what's up? It's your girl, Miss Tink. That's M I C Z, not M I S S. You already know, Channel Natural Pals TV, y'all. And just want to send a special birthday shout out to my cousin Tremaine today. It's his birthday. And shout out to all the Capricorns, you know, this season and all the birthdays in January as well, too. Okay. Let you cuz turn up, turn up. Woo woo. Anyways, we're going to talk about uh, Love and Hip Hop, New York, season seven, I believe, episode nine, Cuckoo for Coco. It was okay, but let's just get into it. Anyways, uh, Yandy meets up with Juju. Basically, tell Juju, look, man, DC mad at me. You know, um, I didn't send the papers in, and he don't know about it. Juju like, bitch, what the hell? Because, you know, Yandy said Juju gives her that tough love. And she was like, girl, I understand your friends not knowing. Your, you know, your mom and all them not knowing. But your dude, and I'm with her too with her fraud ass. I'm just saying that's what I don't like about Yandy. Like, that's 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 my whole thing. Like, ugh, you talking about you a wife, girl, and your man don't. Anyways, I'm just saying. Then that's when she lets, um... Uh, Yandy lets Juju know that apparently Samantha's friend Coco, best friend, you know, let me say it again. Samantha's best friend Coco reached out to Yandy and said, you know, she has some concerns about little man DC. So, you know, when she hear that, you know, her antennas go off and she there or whatever. And I'm with Juju, girl. You better be careful because it's the best friend. I'm just saying. So, she going to meet with her. I guess, girl. Anything for a storyline. Whatever. Anyways, after that, um... <clears throat> Remy and Pat Poos, they chilling at the house. She's talking to her assistant, Char. That's when Pap speaks to her, and Pap noticed that she's pregnant. And I'm like, Remy, girl, you girl. So we already know Pap's still on the whole baby thing, wants her to get knocked up. And Remy like, look, let me try to go all the way up as much as I can go up with this career, and then you can knock me up in unison, okay? Look, I know I told you about the whole promise within the year, but look. Let me try to get what I can get with this coin so we can have some good coinage to stack on. And then you can knock me up. Okay? And, of course, Pap is going to agree and they all cuddle and stuff. I like them two together. I do. You know, I do. Anyways, Cisco feels some type of way. He on his period, of course. And so he meets up with the platypus herself, Tara, to talk about. It. And I'm like, what the hell? She wanted to tell us in the confessional that it's strictly co-parenting. Okay, girl. Okay, girl. Whatever, girl. Anyway, they all talking about the issue. And, of course, that's when um, Cisco tells her that, um, what he did with the whole money situation. And Tara, like, wait a minute now. Just taking money out of my kid's mouth. I'm just saying that maybe the one I'm knocked up with. I'm just saying, like, no, ma'am. That's wrong. And especially with a shitty-ass reason like that, which that's what I'm saying. Like, I understand you don't fuck with him, but let it be a better reason than he went into business with or whatever with broke dollars and your issue was broke dollars. Last time I checked, I thought... It was the enemy of my enemy is my friend. What was you talking about? The enemy is my enemy is my enemy. Like, it, it just, like, come on. Like, if you're going to do some fuck shit, let it make sense. Let it make no sense, like, for real. And then he want to get mad. I'm like, well, damn, are you having a cramp? Is your uterus trying to push a blood clot through? I'm just saying, because the way you banging on that table, if I was at Boston, I'd have been like, y'all motherfuckers must be paying for this because if he break anything up in here, I'm not losing my job. Okay, Mona, what a check for this because this nigga's banging a little bit too hard. And did y'all see the person behind him like, like he getting all mad with Tar, Tar raising his voice. I mean, ooh, excuse me. Her voice at him and stuff. Y'all yelling on, is it worth it? Really? All this accolades? Then I guess when, you know, the blood clot get pushed through or whatever, he calmed down to my yeah, I'm going to fix it. I was like, what the hell? Okay. Okay, anyways. Uh, Sophie Green lip singing. Lip syncing or whatever to her little song or whatever. Um, What, 98 Pause or whatever it was? I don't know. And that's when, of course, Snoop, you know, she getting ready for her gorgeous gangster event. She has a, uh, her family bottle here. And, you know, she, Sophie Green all happy. But she also worried about, you know, Jay's intentions. And I'm talking about, you know, Snoop. And I'm like... Uh, we all see this bitch is on the come up, okay? Jay from Chicago is just on the come up. I'm just saying. But okay, Snoop, okay. And Vado let him know, like, look, you can't mix business with pleasure. So, hey, it is what it is. And I love how Snoop put it out there. Me and Jay are not together. So you say on the show. Mm-hmm. But behind the scenes, say something else. Whatever. So after that, um, DJ No Self Esteem meets up with, you know, her uh, her his other artist, Major Galore or whatever, you know, the singer. You know, she dead on about this you know, first lady of Gwen, and I'm like, really, like, and apparently self and playing her music, I'm like, girl, must be locally, because I damn sure didn't hear your shit on no damn, you know, The Breakfast Club or whatever, you know, when I listen to Charlamagne and them and all them, so I'm just saying, okay, so, okay, girl, just locally, because the hell, okay, Gwen Entertainment, okay, but anyways, that's when, um, 
DJ No Self Esteem lets her know about this little pre-show event that he wants her to do or whatever. And then mentions the whole thing about, you know, Snow No Flake, which Major Glory brought her up. And I must say, from what I seen on TV, I'm going to keep it real. Snow No Flake was taking jabs at Major Glory first, calling her Major Glory and all of that. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So, you know, <clears throat> that's when DJ No Self Esteem said he going to talk to her. So, I guess we're going to see how that goes. We're going to see what's up. Remy is doing her event at the VH1 Hip Hop Honors for, you know, Misty and all of them, which she did a good job. Mm -hmm, she did that. She did real good. And, of course, she's all happy and stuff. Pap takes her out, and then that's when Pap presents her with a gift, talking about a damn pregnancy test, and wants her to go take it. And shit. I'm like, not out in public. She ain't Jocelyn. I'm just saying. I'm saying Jocelyn did it in public, but she did do it with them cameras, you know, from what we did see. But she is not a Jocelyn, okay? Remy likes to be in privacy. So she said she'll do it at home and let them know what's up. But I'm just saying, that that's the wrong gift. I'm just saying, whatever. After that, um, <clears throat> No Substeam meets up with Snow No Flake. And come to find out, Snow No Flake actually signed the contract now. And she thinking that she's going to be the first lady and all this stuff. Everybody want to be this first lady. I'm like, what the fuck is the big deal about this shit? But whatever. And that's when, of course, Snow No Flake, not Snow No Flake, but No Substeam brings up the whole thing about what Major Galore said or whatever. And then that's when... You know, Snow No Flake said she did say something, but that was after she said something. I'm like, wait a minute. From what I seen on TV, you said something first, girl. So I'm just saying, what's really going on? But whatever. So that's when he lets her know that, you know, um, look, I want y'all to sit down and talk before we go do this whole little Gwenin thing or whatever and work together so we can be on the same page. I don't think that's going to go any type of good, but whatever. Yandy meets up with Samantha, best friend Coco, and I'm 50-50 on this because I understand if Samantha and all this was really doing it from what we've seen on the blogs and all of this stuff, and if it is true, you know, woman to woman, yeah, because fair is fair. But my thing is, if Samantha really changed all her best friend, did y'all have a conversation about you telling her that you was going? I don't know. I'm 50-50 on it because I know woman to woman, fair is fair, all that stuff. But you are Samantha's best friend, and I'm pretty sure y'all ain't best friends no more. Y'all put this in the contract for you to do this scene, the betrayal on hook. I'm just saying one of the two. Y'all either not real friends or y'all are friends, and she knew you was going to do this in advance because we all know this shit is staged. But anyways, she lets her know that, you know, I'm sorry for getting involved in this. You know, I, this ain't the type of person that you is. Erica and Samantha plotting on you, and that's when Yandy was like, you know what, well, send me the email. She's like, okay, I'll send you the emails, and I'm like... Okay, but again, it's one of these two things. I'm 50-50 on it. One part is like, girl, that's your best friend. And the other part is like, woman to woman, if it is true, fair is fair. But then it's like, girl, if y'all were best friends and she didn't know you did this, y'all are not best friends now. Or she put this in the contract for you to be on the scene of betrayal. One of the two. That's all I got to say. But hey, it is what it is. Um, After that, DJ No Self Esteem or whatever um, meets up with, of course, Major Galore and... um. So no flake or whatever. And Major Galore's reason was dumb as hell. You talking about you don't like the way she presents herself. So what? If she wants to present herself and say once upon a time not long ago she was a hoe. That is her prerogative. And I love how Mariah Lynn clapped back and said, bitch, you a stripper. What are you talking about? I was like, girl, Major Galore, make your reason have some type of logic on why you don't like her. I'm thinking it's because she really did do all that. And my thing is still snow, snow no flake. You was in the wrong first with you, from what I seen on TV. So I'm just saying. But what you talking about, Major Galore? No, ma'am. And that's when they go back and forth some more. Although I think Major Galore might might break, you know, Snow No Flake and have. But then again, Snow No Flake might have some go too. We're gonna see about that next week. Anyway, DJ No Substein was basically saying, look, I want y'all to basically I had this one slot to do the big show. But I was like, what's up with this pre-show? It don't make no damn sense. Apparently, they're going to be having some competition to perform at the powerhouse event or whatever. And I'm like, so is the pre-show the big show? Which one is I don't know. Anyways. And, you know, that's when, you know, Snow No Flake and Major Glow was like, I'm down. So, okay, we're going to see how this goes, I guess. Anyways, now this is the shit I'm going to go off on. This gorgeous gangster event. So... Yandy and Great Value Soup show up. Now, all of a sudden, you want to care about Great Value Soup, you know, career. What the hell was you at when she was doing all this extra shit with, uh, you know, the reject vanilla ice, Drewski? I'm just saying. But, okay, Yandy, I guess. So, she's there, whatever. And then Method Man come through. That's what's up. You know, I'm pretty sure Mona paid him to come through. And it's looking all fine. Then, all of a sudden, Snoop get up there and perform. And she's talking about, you know, thank you for everybody coming. And we had J.S., I love you so 
dope. I'm like, bitch. And everybody, you know, whoever was looking, although Mona paid for all the people to be there, so they were all actors. And it was like, as soon as she screamed, we need people to look to make it look realistic. Oh, I'm just saying, but no, Jay. Loud as hell. She's talking about, I love I love y'all too. Y'all, yeah, y'all. She just at work, girl. Chill out. Like you didn't have too many drinks. She didn't went so got uh just Snoop. Other performance, some chick get up there, the one arm dude performed, then Sophie Green performed, and all of a sudden she loud again. Tell my go best friend, go best friend. Now she your best friend. Okay, girl. Just loud. Everybody looking, even Yandy like, girl, you've been hitting the drinks, just backing it too much, been taking it to the head too much, girl. What the hell? This is not Chris Brown and you know Fair Joe take it to the head. Like, stop it. Put put the drink down. That's how she was just just doing just too damn much. Even Snoop was like, look, I'm, I'm mad at Jay acting all like this, but I'm going to handle that another time. So she's talking to Sophie Green, congratulating her, whatever. And all of a sudden, Jay comes through talking about, shut up, let me talk. And Snoop like, shut up. Sophie, I'm with you, girl. Look, I'm happy y'all came through, but I don't got time for this. I'm about to go make my rounds. Y'all uh, argue, deuces. She got the hell out of there. Right on, girl. And all of a sudden, Jay just take the whole thing that pretty much Snoop not trying to talk, talking about, well, you go fuck with other bitches. Where the fuck did that come from? This is about business. Like, this is... Oh, this is why I feel like it's acting at its worst. Because I don't know what it's like, you know what I'm saying, now since they, you know, filmed the show. But from the show perspective, girl, this is why you and her don't need to be together, girl. Like, no. This girl really was talking all like that. And talking about, go fuck with other bitches. Snoop trying to walk away. She's like, no, Snoop, bitch, shut up. You sound like a bullhorn that just would not go off. It's just... The button just broke. A broken bullhorn. Snoop, Snoop. Bitch, shut up. She walking out and all of a sudden, Jay walking out. I don't understand what. Girl, you've been drinking too much. I was so glad Snoop got in her ass when they walked outside. Like, you doing too much. You think anybody's going to sign with us? But you acting like that? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? This is business. Like, I don't even want to do this no more. I don't want to do this with you. And I don't blame you. Like, you sitting up here talking about, we going to get this money. We going to get this. Girl, no. This is Snoop stuff. This ain't about you. This is all about Snoop at the end of the day. You are such an opportunist, girl. And you just made yourself look so damn stupid. So glad Snoop walked off from you. You want to talk about... Urgh, bitch, what you getting mad for? You look dumb as hell. Just doing too much. Like, Snoop trying to walk outside. She want to walk outside. Like, the camp, she ain't trying to do this. Like, her private life is in her house. Like she said, like, you doing too much. And you think this is the best way to get her back? Like, go on, Jay. You fucked up. You fucked that shit all the way up. I hope I don't see you no more for the rest of the season until the reunion. Your opportunist ass go back to Chicago, okay? I'm pretty sure your child misses you. Take your ass back to Chicago. Anyways, so Cisco and Dirty Feet meet up. I don't know what the fuck this was. Like, Cisco is on his period. And I'm hoping and praying he did not use his mother as an excuse or a storyline because this still didn't make no sense. They talking or whatever. Peter's still upset. I understand, you know, it is what it is. They want to put it to rest, or at least Peter does, or at least Cisco claim he does. And Cisco, like, you know what I'm saying, it is what it is. And he felt some type of way because, you know, Dirty Feet moves his, moved his plastic knees a little bit too fast. And he expected and almost, you know, got on his ass or whatever. And I'm like, okay, where is this going? Where is this going? And then that's when, you know, Dirty Feet was like, you know what, if you, if, you was a, or you was in my situation, or if the situation happened again or whatever, I would basically do the shit again. And, you know, Cisco like, what? You know, that's all, you know, Cisco know Drew Hill needed to hear. And his ass was like, all right, let me waste, you know, let me not waste you the trip. When he said that, I'm telling you, man, Peter and them damn rubber knees or wooden knees, whatever, them prosthetic knees, they good. He been going to a good doctor because they, even though we all know the damn security was going to break that shit up, he went over that bitch pretty fast. I think Cisco and, you know, Dirty Feet probably... We have a good little go at each other, but it is what it is. I mean, it is what it is. And then that's when they talk some more, and all of a sudden, Cisco basically gets into his feelings. Again, he's having another cramp, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to pass another blood clot. He's on his period, y'all, I'm telling you. He's going to talk about his wife leaving him and his mother leaving him. Now, first things first, your wife left you because what your ass did umpteen years ago on the show with this diamond strawberry bullshit, then backed up with the Mariah Lynn shit. So stop it right there. 
He has nothing to do that. He got 10 kids, okay? He knows what it feels like, but that don't mean he take it out on y'all and you taking it out on his money. Although, again, it ain't no 10 grand. I, I refuse to believe that it's 5 grand, but hey, it is what it is. So, and, and like I said, I'm sorry to hear about your mom, but I just pray you ain't using it as a storyline because it still didn't make no sense. Your beef is with dirty feet. I mean, not dirty feet. With broke dollars, not dirty feet. You shouldn't have took that out on him. Like, you was wrong for that. Straight up, you was. Your reason was fucked up. I understand you don't fuck with that person, but let your reason have some type of logic in it. Anyways, that's when um he apologized or whatever. They all hug it out and stuff. And then as soon as Cisco talk about, I'm going to give you the money back. That's when Dirty Feet talking about, I don't want the money. I want my brother. Shit. The way you hurt your damn prostate knees and try to, you know, jump over him with them bad rubber knees. You better, you need that damn money the way you was acting. All the kids you got. Like, come on now, six baby mamas, every many baby mamas and all this. You put out the numbers to the T. You want to sit up here and tell him you don't want the money back. You want your brother back? Get the fuck out of here, okay, dirty feet? Whatever. Anyways, y'all, that's pretty much what happened. I can't wait to see what's going on next week. I am Miss Tink. That's M-I-C-C, not M-I-S-S. You already know, Challenge Natural Policy TV, and y'all have a blessed, blessed day. All right, this will be up tonight, and I have to go to work tonight, so it will be up tonight. Deuces, y'all. Bye.